Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for December 2021. Housing values continue to rise last month, but conditions are diversifying as stock levels rise and affordability pressures mount. Australian housing values were 1.3% higher in November, marking the 14th consecutive month where CoreLogic's National Home Value Index recorded positive value growth. The November update takes national housing values 22.2% higher over the past 12 months, adding approximately $126,700 to the median value of an Australian home. Although values are continuing to rise, the November result was the softest outcome since January when values rose 0.9%. Since a cyclical peak in the rate of growth back in March, when housing values rose at 2.8%, there's been a notable trend towards milder price growth. Virtually every factor that's driven housing values higher has lost some potency over recent months. Fixed mortgage rates are rising, higher listings are taking some urgency away from buyers, affordability has become more of a substantial barrier to entry, and credit is less available. Brisbane and Adelaide are the only capital cities yet to experience a slowdown, with the monthly rate of growth reaching a new cyclical high across both cities in November. Brisbane home values were up 2.9% in November, while Adelaide values were up 2.5%. In dollar terms, that equates to a monthly rise of approximately $18,500 and $13,500 respectively based on median values. Relative to the larger cities, housing affordability is less pressing, there have been fewer disruptions from COVID lockdowns and a positive rate of interstate migration is fueling housing demand. On the other hand, Sydney and Melbourne have seen demand more heavily impacted by affordability pressures and negative migration from both interstate and an overseas perspective. Different supply dynamics are also creating divergent trends across Australia's capital cities. In the four-week period to November 28th, total advertised stock levels across Adelaide were 32% lower than the five-year average and 34% lower across Brisbane. Across Sydney and Melbourne, however, stock levels have become far more normalised in recent weeks, with Sydney's total listing numbers sitting 3% below the five-year average, while stock levels across Melbourne are 8% above the five-year average. As listings rise, we're also seeing a subtle softening in vendor metrics, such as the median number of days it takes to sell a property and auction clearance rates. Capital City homes are showing a median time on market of 25 days, up compared with the recent low of just 21 days in May. At the same time, auction clearance rates have trended lower, with the Capital City weighted average reducing from the low 80% range in early October to the high 60% range over the last week of November. The rise in listings and the softening of key vendor metrics implies the housing market may be moving through a peak in selling conditions. However, it will be important to see if this trend towards higher listings continues after the festive season. Another trend that's evolving is that houses are no longer outperforming units as substantially as they were earlier this year. Houses continue to record a higher growth rate than units, however the quarterly rate of growth is now the narrowest it's been since October last year, with 1.6 percentage points between the two broad housing types. Based on median values, capital city houses are now 38% more expensive than capital city units. That's the largest difference on record. In dollar value terms, a capital city house is averaging approximately $240,000 more than a capital city unit. In Sydney, where the gap between house and unit values is the widest, a house now costs $523,000 more on average than a unit. With such a large value gap opening up between the broad housing types, it's no wonder we're seeing demand gradually transition towards higher density housing options, simply because they're substantially more affordable than buying a house. The slowdown in housing market conditions is less obvious across the regional areas of Australia, where the monthly pace of capital gains has accelerated over the past three months. Across the combined rest of state regions of Australia, housing values are up 2.2% in November, double the monthly rate recorded over the combined capital cities at 1.1%. Regional Tasmania and regional New South Wales have been the standouts from a capital growth perspective. Across regional Australia, the strongest growth trends remain skewed towards the coastal and the lifestyle markets, with New South Wales, Southern Highlands and Shoalhaven recording the highest quarterly growth rate at 9.7%, followed by the Hunter Valley at 8.9%, and Tasmania's Launceston and Northeast region at 7.7%. 
Demand for housing across regional markets, especially those within commuting distance of the major cities, is continuing to benefit from the rise in popularity of remote working arrangements, along with the renewed demand for coastal and lifestyle properties, and in many cases, more affordable housing options. Sydney housing values were up a further 0.9% in November. This is the first time we've seen the monthly pace of growth drop below 1% since January. The rate of growth has been easing since March when housing values are rising at 3.8% month on month. Considering housing values have risen by approximately $224,000 over the past year, housing affordability constraints are having a progressively larger impact on housing demand. Based on data to June, it takes an average of 13 and a half years for the typical Sydney household to save a 20% deposit, the longest saving period of any capital city by several years. A lift in overall stock levels is another factor taking some heat out of the market. Since the first week of spring, total advertised stock levels have risen by 41% across Sydney, providing buyers with more choice and less urgency. The outlook for Australian housing markets remains positive, however, the pace of capital gains has lost momentum across most regions since April. This trend towards slowing growth is likely to continue into next year and beyond. Most of the factors that have been pushing housing prices higher have either diminished or now expired. Advertised inventory remains low, but it's now rising across most regions. A further increase in available supply should help to take more heat out of the market as buyers have more choice and less urgency. Vendors may need to adjust their pricing expectations if homes take longer to sell. Fixed-term mortgage rates are rising, which could also act as a disincentive for some buyers. Although fixed rates are rising, variable mortgage rates are less inclined to rise until the cash rate lifts, which is still expected to be more than a year away. Low mortgage rates will continue to support housing demand, but probably not to the same extent as seen through 2021. Housing affordability is becoming more challenging from month to month. The latest housing affordability metrics show the ratio of housing values to household incomes reached a new record high in June, as did the number of years it takes to save a deposit. With higher barriers to entry, especially for new home buyers who don't have the benefit of accrued equity behind them, it's likely housing demand will be progressively impacted as fewer households can afford to buy. A natural consequence of worsening affordability could see demand increase for more affordable, higher density housing options such as townhomes and units. Tighter credit policies could also work to slow housing activity. APRA has already lifted the serviceability buffer for new lending by 50 basis points. While this policy isn't likely to have a material impact on home lending, APRA went on to release a macroprudential policy framework in November, which calls out growth in asset prices, along with other factors including credit growth and lending conditions, as a key indicator of emerging systemic risks. The potential for tighter credit policies in the future remains a downside risk for housing. Although the housing headwinds are building, a variety of tailwinds should continue to support an upwards trajectory for home values in the short term. Although mortgage rates are rising, the cost of debt is likely to remain well below long-term averages, continuing to support demand for an extended period of time. Additionally, as more Australians are vaccinated, disruptions from COVID should become less frequent and shorter in duration, although the latest Omicron variant presents some additional risk. Open international borders, despite the recently announced delay, are also a net positive for housing markets. Although the most immediate impact from resumed overseas migration will be seen in rental demand, while an uplift in purchasing a home from permanent migrants is likely to be more gradual. As we approach the festive season, we can expect the housing market to move into a period of semi-hibernation, picking up again towards late January. With a somewhat quieter few weeks ahead, I'd like to take the opportunity to wish you all a very merry festive season and a prosperous new year. See you in 2022.